the title of this um, episode is God, the Enemy of the State. This is actually an introduction to a series that I will be doing by the title, God as an Enemy of the State. Um, the thesis of this series is simply that God is an enemy of the state. But in this series, I would work to establish that the Judeo-Christian God, that is the God of the Hebrew Bible and the God of the so-called New Testament, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, is against the state, that he's not a friend of the, of the state, as commonly believed by the advocates of the state, and even by anti- uh, theistic anarchist. But rather we will establish that God is the arch enemy of the state of the of the state. That he's the chief enemy of government. We will do this by going through the Bible from the beginning to the end and see the attitude by which the scriptures, that is, the Hebrew and Christian to the Jewish and Christian sacred writing, the Old and New Testament of the Bible, or the so-called Old and New Testament, New Testament of the Bible, and, and how it speaks about or concerning the kingdoms of this world, concerning human government and God's relationship to them. As an outline of the series, uh, forgive me um, that some of these words may be uh, hard to read due to the font color and the background. Probably should have done a better background. Um, but anyhow, this is an outline of what you may expect to be on future episodes. Uh, what I will likely cover. Uh, I may cover some other things that are not on this outline, but anyhow, this is a rough draft, a rough outline of what will be, uh, what I will be covering. The first, first thing I will do is make an argument for the existence of God and why such gods, the ancient gods, the pagan, uh, uh, of, of the Greek, Roman, Norse, and even the Hindu deities, cannot be, or ought to, uh, ought to be excluded. Uh, how these arguments actually exclude the, uh, exclude the deities. Uh, and hint why the God that is being called for is at the very least a deistic God. That is a God who just created the universe. And then after the initial creation ceases to intervene in the affairs of man. And at the very most I would argue that he does intervene in the affairs of men. Number two, I will then establish that God is sovereign over creation. That is, that he is the, 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 the owner of the universe. And the reason why I will establish this immediately after I establish God's existence is simply due to a series of, uh, and if you hear background noise, it's my fan. Sorry, it gets hot, so. I will establish God's sovereignty over creation, mainly, and 
chiefly I would do this via, via the scriptures, uh, but other things. But I, I have to do this because one of the main objections to God, to the God of the Bible, is his action that he that the Bible describes him committing with against human being, mainly uh, destruction of innocent, uh, of human life, and even having the children of Israel do it as well. So I will seek to, instead of making, oh, I will make somewhat of a defense of God, but it's not an actual uh, defense of God, and I'll, and when we get to there, you'll see what I mean by this. Um, so, but in order to actually go uh, to, to roll out uh, to why is it important to uh, uh, what comes after this uh, the, the series of God's intervention that you first have to establish a sovereignty so it's literally the first thing that I have to wind up doing the third um thing we will be covering is after we establish God's existence and then God's sovereignty over creation or his ownership we will then establish or we will then go into the Hebrew into the sacred script the sacred writing and go on to establish God as an enemy of the state and one of the first things we, we will be covering is God's wrath as poured out in the flood, or, or the flood being God's judgment of human beings, in which we will just go through background of the flood story and seek to establish what God, or why God, destroyed human beings and even animals. Uh, in the flood. Uh, in this series, I want to go over the whether or not the flood happened or didn't happen, or whether or not the flood is local or global. Suffice it to say that I take the position that the flood was a local event, uh, but one that happened. Uh, prior to humanity spread across the globe. Uh, so, uh, uh, roughly around the end of the Ice Age. Um, number four. Uh, God destruction of the first attempt to establish human government. In this particular passage, we will go over humanity's rebellious act, the first rebellious act of human against God after the flood, seeking to establish a kingdom, a human government, and that God's reaction to that establishment by destroying the government, the, or getting rid of the attempt, by destroying the uh or judgment against the government by uh, by going ahead and d destroying the government and get and then forcing human beings to spread abroad. Um, that what we will go over in that episode. Basically, uh, here's what we'll go through: is creation, the flood, and then the Tower of Babel. Babel. In the fifth, so number five is the Torah's answer to establishing justice. Basically, the reason why I inserted this one here, even though it really has nothing to do with God as enemy of the state, it does have something to do with God, with with the establishment of judge of, of judges. Basically, the question that the state is to bring up is. Without a state, without a centralized uh, monopoly on violence or a monopoly on arbitration, uh, 
how then will justice and dispute be settled? Uh, and this is the, I will attempt to answer that the Torah, I believe, or the Hebrew Bible gives a somewhat reasonable answer uh, for this. Uh, and that it is compatible with answers that have already been given in, in, our, in other market anarchist literature. So this is, will be, if you will, a, a religious answer to accompany um, chaos theory. Uh, and uh, among other uh, writing. So number six, God's prediction that Israel would establish a king and he set the laws regarding king uh, or regarding the establishment of a king or the ruling of a king, how a king is to rule what the king can and cannot do. Mainly in this uh, pa I will go over a passage in which status go to and say, look, God established the king, yada, yada, yada. And I will demonstrate basically that's not true, that God actually predicted the children of Israel would establish a king, but then God, if you will, reluctantly, uh, grants them their wish and then give them ruling regarding the king, or give them rules that the king ought to abide by, or has to abide by, and I will basically compare this with another incident, which Israel rebelled against God and then establishes a, or seek to establish a religious order, or a, a priesthood, if you will, and that God grants them their desire for a priesthood, but then sets restrictions on them. And in Jewish law, or in Jewish, in the tradition of Judaism, there is actually a reason why God grants them the said priesthood. And we will then apply this to the, uh, Israel's request for a king, how really this is analogous. Uh, in episode number seven, or sorry, number seven, Israel request for a king, so we will go over the fulfillment of God's prediction in the Torah, in the Torah, and how God reacts to the, to the request. Or particularly first, how the prophet reacts, and then second, how God then reacts to the prophet uh, and, and and to Israel's request to be like the nations. In the eighth episode, we will deal with God's ultimate destruction of human government. Basically, this is going to be the final episode of Old Testament Scripture, or the Hebrew Scripture, the Hebrew Bible, in which I will then go over some of the prophets in which they predict or prophesy God's established, the establishment of God's rule over the entire globe and the elimination of human government and the ushering again of peace. Uh, where nations will no longer be warring amongst themselves because you will really have no nation. Uh, and this is basically will be coming from Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel, for example. And so we will, that what will, will be covered in that episode, uh, the destruction of human governments. In episode number nine, we will then go into the New Testament, or the so-called uh, New Testament, the uh, Christian 
uh, scriptures. In which the first episode is, uh, and that would be the Gospel of Yeshua, a political gospel. Unlike most Christians, I do, will not be proposing that the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection, but rather I propose my thesis is that Yeshua's gospel is political in nature. And that it is this message that got him killed, ultimately. Uh, because the human rulers saw this as a threat. And you will see why uh, in, in this message. Uh, Except to say, it has everything to do with the Markot HaShemayim, the Kingdom of Heaven. In episode 10, Triumph Over Our Authorities or Human Government by the Cross, in which I will go over several of Paul's teaching that generally uh, most Christians have interpreted to be about spiritual principalities and how really it's not talking about anything. Well, just spiritual, yes, but not necessarily. That it is through cross, it is through the cross of Christ, through his death and resurrection, Yeshua have triumphed and, sh and openly displayed humiliation toward human governments. And I will establish, I will demonstrate that through you know, several of the passages that Paul had written with regard to this. Uh, for example, in Colossians. Uh, the 11th, uh, Peter and Paul advocate for human government, or pacifist. Basically, this is the question, in which I will be going over some, of, some passages written by Peter and Paul that appear to be on the surface, advocating for human government, uh, or better yet, teaching that God has established human government and that He um, commands blind obedience and or allegiance thereup to them. In fact, these passages are passages brought up by statist Christians and anarchist or anti-theistic or atheistic anarchist alike in order to uh, alike claiming that the Bible is against um, anarchy and that it is rather for or if you will pro-state that it is that that it is an impossibility for one to be a theist, or particular to be a Christian theist, or or in particular to be a a Paulian, uh, should I say, a Christian theist who accepts the writings of Paul, and be an, an anarchist at the same time, and then finally. I will go over number 12. Uh, but before I do number 12, uh, just say uh, the thesis number 11 is that uh, really the, the statists are wrong and using these passages that really there's another way of interpreting them and that is that Peter and Paul are pacifists. That they actually call for a passive disobedience and ultimate submission uh, to to government seeking to bind them and this lead to martyrdom eventually. Uh, but anyhow, to the submission quote unquote that we're talking about the a passive submissive a submission and not an active obedience. Uh, in fact, I will explain why the normative interpretation is really a ridiculous interpretation given in light of history and Paul's own um, 
and really what you have within the letter themselves and and, and the movement which they propagated uh, but number 12 God's final war with the state the real teaching of the book of Revelation so instead of actually viewing the book of Revelation as the as the text that is dealing with prophecy or that not to, uh, that even though it may actually ultimately deal with prophecy a uh, future thing it rather the po I will deal with it as the polemic that it is that much of the thing written in there have are familiar both to Paul's immediate readers and even today because the beast is an ongoing beast uh, so it's identifying the beast as, if you will, the state, and that the true meaning, the true teaching of Revelation, is is that the believer is to reject the state and give it allegiance to God, and that God will finally triumph over the state, and that those who give allegiance to the state are enemies to God uh, basically is what happens in that um, episode um, I may then finally conclude which I haven't put on this one and outside instead of dealing with the scripture I, I made the final episode episode number 13 if I decided to uh, 13 episodes or do all of those which I list here I will ultimately wind up after I deal with these is to discuss how allegiance to the state is idolatry how the state itself is a god and how those who are either atheist or are theist ought to reject the state if they want to be consistent. Uh, so, that is the outline of, uh, this, uh, of the series that I will be doing, God as Enemy of the State. Again, my name is Matthew Mitchell. You are watching Divine Anarchy on Voluntary Virtues Network. Uh, from and every which airs every every Saturday at ten to ten thirty Eastern Standard Time. Thank you. Shalom alaikum.